Our very best yes. wishes to your mom. 91 so years old. Okay. Wrote it out on the bath. Just fabulous Stuart, stuff. Stuart sends his best wishes. I do. Uh -huh. Stuart Barney, do you like him or is oh, he not one of the ones you like? Uh, I don't like Lou Dobbs. Oh, oh dear. I knew we stayed too long. You're wrong, ma'am. Lou Dobbs is a beautiful man. <laughs> Yes! Remember this. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Yeah. Mark my words. <laughs> well, it's now this. The wall will come later. We're right now renovating large sections of wall, massive sections, making it brand new. We're doing a lot of renovation. We're building four different samples of the wall to see which one we're going to choose, and the wall is going to be built. It'll be funded a little bit later. Mm, well, that is quite a shift. It's like, it's like he went from this. To this. Why me? Yeah, he's easy. Now, some people are outraged, including Ann Coulter. She feels betrayed. It's playing out like a love-torn action flick. In a world of partisan politics, it takes a stand-up guy to sit down with the other side. He likes us. He likes me anyway. But will he lose the one woman who stood by him through thick and thin? So far, I give him an A+. Plus. Will he pay the ultimate price for making new friends? Nude Man on a Unicorn Weightlifting Other Nude Men on Unicorns presents Donald Trump, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and Rowan Atkinson as Nigel. Executive Action 8, Angering Ann Coulter. Oh, you don't want to do that. Poor Ann. We love Ann. We love Ann Coulter. So, before you panic, do this exercise. When you think President Trump has let you down, consider the alternative. Now, having said all this, why aren't I 50 points ahead, you might ask? Imagine hearing that voice for four years. So, do you feel a little better now? Yes. I should be a therapist. The way I look at it, Donald Trump, he's like this Star Wars franchise. Sure, there are movies within it that you love, but then there are ones that you don't. But on the whole, the series of films leaves you with a pretty good feeling. And come on, this guy, he's a salesman. It's simple. The Democrats want the dreamers to stay, and Trump wants the criminals out. Seems like both sides can have their way, so they negotiate. Let's take DACA, 800,000 so-called dreamers. Trump knows there's no way you can send them all back. But instead of writing it off, he made DACA valuable by trading it to get something he wants, which is the wall, which is to say border security. Real estate agents do this all the time. They show you a house that's way out of your budget so they can move you just a little outside your budget. They get something from you by pretending to give up something that they never had. Trump always asks for more than he knows he's going to get. And he does it in a way that starts the conversation, the kind that didn't really catch the media's attention until he forced their hand. So is Trump going back on his promise on the wall, or was the wall his blunt way of raising the issue? Saying build a wall is just a catchier way of saying fix our borders. Face it, saying I love you is way better than saying I have a biological attraction to you that may wear off at some point. <laughs> Yet, sometimes they mean the same thing. <laughs> so Mexico says it won't pay for the wall, and Trump needs the Democrats to help fund it. So he sits down to dinner with his new pals, Chuck and Nancy, or Chancy, <laughs> where, they, where they ate Chinese food and chocolate pie. How weird is that? That's like hot fudge on spaghetti. But anyway, Trump sounds like he'll give in to DACA, which is what he was going to do anyway, if he gets more cash for the border, which can be spent on a wall. You see what's going on? 
So after all this division, they're trying to work together. And we're not used to it. It's like watching a dog hump a cat. <laughs> it's not natural. It's rare. It's like watching one of those nature shows where Jack Hanna is walking in the wild and this happens. Somewhere about 20 feet in front of me right now is the king of beasts. It's a beautiful water hole. So I don't step on a snake or something. <laughs> Oh, not that tough, are you? But that's what's happening now. We see something rare and we're freaking out, but we shouldn't. Sure, this is a strange trip we're on, but as long as you believe Donald Trump has America's best interests at heart, he can handle the ride, especially when you consider who might have been in that car with you otherwise. Now, having said all this, why aren't I 50 points ahead, you might ask? Feel better? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Let's welcome the guests, okay? He's so smart, he got out of politics. Former Utah Congressman and Fox News contributor, Jason Chavitz. His wit is drier than the back of an old stamp. Writer and comedian Joe DeVito. She, she puts the Miz in miserable. National Review reporter Kat Tibbs. And a Blimpus's pillow. Former bodyguard, my massive sidekick, Tyrus. All right. By the way, you got to stick around for the B block. We got a great one coming up on Hillary. We're not done with that. Jason, okay, this is what I find really interesting about this. Where are my notes? Okay, it's not just Donald Trump feeling a backlash from the right, uh, uh, you know, the people like Ann Coulter. Pelosi and Schumer, they're feeling it from their left flank as well. They think that they gave away a lot of stuff to Donald. So isn't that a good sign of compromise when both extremes are really ticked off? Oh, look, it burst the whole bubble of the Democratic uh, talking points, the idea that they, we didn't even have a conversation with yes. Donald Trump. So the idea that they actually might get something in yeah. return, mm -hmm. the funding uh, is going to come from Congress, doesn't require legislation, mm -hmm. but the wall has to go through Congress, and mm -hmm. that's what they got to get done. Yeah, damn. All right, Joe, they met with Hitler, and it worked out. <laughs> How are they going to call him Hitler now? Well, you can't call him Hitler. I think the main thing I'm taking away from this is that it's it's time for me to make that move on Ann Coulter finally. <laughs> I think so. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think he, he's again playing them. It's hard to see what Trump's long game is, but I think he's going to end up getting what he wanted. Although, w when you played that clip, it sounds like it's gone from build that wall to uh, flip that wall. We'll work with an existing wall we have and get some value out of it. Um, I, I think it's good news because when you look at DACA, th there are requirements for DACA. Yeah. You, you have to have a clean record. You have to stay in school. You, you, these, are, these are good people, and if we can work out a compromise for that, I think that's good for America. And you can tell because former president of Mexico, Vincente Fox, was tweeting, oh, these are such wonderful people. How can, well, if they're so great, why don't you try to keep them right. in your country mm. to help your own country? Well, yeah, that's true. But the thing is, I often think if they're leaving their country, they're smart. <laughs> you yeah, know they're I mean? getting out. <laughs> they're getting out. They're getting out. That's all, like, you know, the reason why America is so successful is we took the risk takers. Everybody yeah. that came over here was like, I'm getting out of there. And so we got you. So I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm more of a, a, an embracing type of person, Kat. As you know, I really do feel for everyone around the world. We knew, I mean, this is a Scott Adams point. We knew that DACA was never going to go away. Right. It, but he turned it into a trading piece that he used in this negotiation. So was that smart? Or did, he, did, it, did it backfire? I think it was. I think that anybody that was paying attention would realize that this DACA thing isn't a flip-flop at all. He never said, I don't want these people to stay yeah. here. He just said that constitutionally, the legislature has to do it if they mm. actually can stay here for real. President Obama himself said it was a temporary thing. I mean, and th that's a great thing. First of all, the feelings argument, I mean, in itself, if you're a kid and your parents say, we're moving, you can't say, no, I'm not going. You go. At least that's how it worked in my family. They used to just leave me behind. But also, okay, <laughs> but also, like, economically as well, these are people that are contributing to the economy. They have jobs, and it would cost $60 billion to deport them. So it's also a smart economic decision. You know what's interesting? If it would cost $60 billion to deport them, you could have them deport themselves. 
Because then you create jobs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that made absolutely no sense. I don't think no that's sense. how that works. Uh, yeah, it, it could don't know. Half could deport the other, so you create jobs for that for four hundred thousand. Fight them. What? You're gonna pit fight him, lose his deporting? <laughs> that was in the next segment. I was. Right. I, now, Tyrus, yes. could President Trump actually be the most, the strangest uniter in U.S. history? Well, I don't know if he's the strangest uniter, but he took a page out of the, uh, the dating book. Mm -hmm. He's been in this love affair with the Republican Party for a long time, and then he said, I think I'm going to see other people. We're not <laughs> over. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm just going to have dinner with them. <laughs> and then on Twitter, the post, they had chocolate cake. We have chocolate cake. <laughs> so I think this is not so much as uh, the deal. He gets it. He knows that DACA, is, those people, it's a good thing for them to stay. And his base is like, no, we said everybody got to go. But on all sudden, this is what it is. This is, to me, his first real test mm -hmm. as president is that he's going to have to lead in that gray area. Mm -hmm. And when you're leading, in the, and this is why he's in that leadership role, it's not always going to be the way you planned it. Mm -hmm. What he great. said on the campaign trail in the perfect world, that's what he wanted for his, that's his base, that's what they wanted. But in the really real world mm -hmm. where there's every time a president makes a decision, good or bad, somebody's always hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no, when you, Whenever he, whenever he signs something, somebody's going to lose something. Right. Some, and you just hope that it's the, the majority. It's just, it's a tough call. So he's looked at the field. He saw like, hey, this DACA thing, it's not really what I yeah. campaigned about, but it's the right thing to do. Yeah, he, so he's, he's showing real leadership. And, and at the same time, sticking it to the Republican Party who dragged their feet to get things done. Yeah, so he, he, he hit everybody. That was well done. You know, I also, I, I'm troubled by the whole dinner, that the fact that how could you have a dinner with Chuck and Nancy without drinking? Because, <laughs> number one, that's impossible. Number two, you can't blame booze for your mistakes if there's no booze around. There's, that's why you should always be drinking, because then you could always blame the alcohol. All right, coming up, Hillary wrote a book, and she won't shut up about it. Neither will we. They love to hiss. Yes, Hillary's book has arrived. <laughs> so, like the small intestine, her book is divided into three parts. Could have, should have, would have. She could have said this to Trump, she could have said this to Bernie, or she would have said that to Obama. No, instead she held it in like a one 12 month fart. <laughs> and in the book, she finally let it out and boy, does it stink. Now, like every show that's been doing this book, we're gonna run some audio excerpts. Well, sort of. In the family room, we put up a colorful painting of the balloon drop at the Democratic National Convention. <laughs> Over the fireplace, I hung a vintage suffragette banner that Mark had given me that declared votes for women. I also finally saw the last season of Downton Abbey. That show always reminds me of the night I spent at Buckingham Palace in 2011 during President Obama's state visit in a room just down the hall from the balcony where the queen waves to the crowds. By Thanksgiving, the work on the house was done. Everything was perfect before our friends and family descended for dinner. My mind wandered back to that incredible day when Bill took the oath of office for the first time. <laughs> you got a hand to her. No one has made more money off losing than Hillary. And I include Marie Osmond. Looks good. Yeah, she does. Nutrisystem. <laughs> but now she's got a book and she's making the rounds like a Jehovah's Witness in a pantsuit. <laughs> If only she worked as hard for the presidency, then we wouldn't have this book about how she lost the presidency. What a great example of strong womanhood. She blamed everyone but herself for her loss. Comey, Russia, Supreme Court, Sanders, the RNC, the American voter. She spreads blame like her husband spreads... <laughs> anyway. 
It's like she's on some weird drug. Have you made thousands of people cry all at once? Are you running out of people to blame for your failures? You've thought about turning on your friends, but don't know how. Well, worry no more. From the makers of Blame It All comes extra strength Blame It All PM. This powerful formula works with the brain's receptors to help you throw everyone under the bus with none of the guilt. Pinning your defeats on those closest to you has never been easier. The Supreme Court, Vice President Joe Biden, FBI Director Jim Comey, the insurgent left-wing candidacy of Bernie Sanders, Bill especially, the last season of Downton Abbey. You'll wake up with the confidence to do a sham of a book tour so you can make money from the seeds of sympathy you planted. Get extra strength Blame It All PM today. Side effects may include broken alliances and fractured parties. The only thing more glaring than her excuses is her sense of entitlement. She actually bought a home next to her house in Chappaqua for the White House staff, she expected, while she vacations. Now imagine that. She didn't, she didn't just pick out the curtains. She picked out the damn house. Now it's just an expensive couch for Bill to sleep on. <laughs> Alone, I think. Now, judging by her book, she's infected by the very bug she helped spread. Victimhood. Pitting Americans against each other, she created an Olympics of grievance. The division, however, didn't add up for her. So now she's the biggest victim of them all. Has this ever happened before? Did anyone who lost the presidency write a book like this? Did Ford or Dukakis or Dole? Well, she said she wanted to be a first. And she is, though not in the way she expected. <laughs> Uh, Joe, um, is this the best way for her to handle her loss? Well, I haven't read the book because no one's offered to hold a gun to my head. <laughs> but it's a nice piece of Hillary Clinton fan fiction written by her number one fan, <laughs> where she talks about her coping methods, and one of them, she said, was she practiced alternate nostril breathing, right. which I think any of us would, we would do the same thing if we were that full of <laughs> um, she also says she's infected with the responsibility gene, clearly recessive in her case, because she blames everyone but herself, and she was the problem. That election was hers to lose. She lost to a candidate that came out of nowhere who's never even been a mayor or a town selectman or a dog catcher, yeah. and America looked at her and said, we'll take anyone else over you, and she can't accept that fact. Mm -hmm. J uh, Jason, what do you think, I mean, this book is selling, people want to read it, but is it like the... Uh, the cliched car accident, people are reading it because it's so sad and I gross. don't know. I mean, the, the whole premise and the conclusion is all right on the cover. Why, why do you even need to open it up? What happened? <laughs> Hillary Clinton happened. Yeah. I mean, that's the... As long as I don't have to call her President Clinton, I'm happy with her selling yeah. as many books as possible. It's true. Pirates? Yes. Um, is she hurting the party, her party, by not just refusing to stop talking? Should she stop talking, or is this just too entertaining? It, well, I, I missed the entertaining part. I, <laughs> is there a pop-up book with some juggling? I mean, it's it unfortunately is a reflection of our time when it's just in to be a victim. I mean, uh, you can't just lose anymore. Could you imagine Matt Ryan was still uh, crying about losing the Super Bowl? I mean, he lost the damn Super Bowl. She wasn't even in it in the fourth quarter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. Or, you know, some of the other guys who ran, like George Bush Sr. Like, I mean, hashtag Ross Perot ruined my life. You know? <laughs> John McCain, Sarah Palin. What happened? You know, yeah, yeah. Al Gore's book, Bill yeah. too. I mean, <laughs> it's just we live. We, it's a victim. We're, it's a, I won't be a part of this. You yeah. lost. Move yeah. on. Yeah. This is unheard of. You know, yeah. like she's still crying. That's it. Trump should do a quick publish of a book that just says you lost, move on, and it's just <laughs> nothing in there. That would be funny. No, like page one, seriously, move on. Yeah. Page two, why are you still flipping pages? Move on. <laughs> page three, OMG, this is a joke. I can't believe you still haven't moved on. Yeah. And to be it, yeah. That's a really good idea. Somebody. Cat is going to steal that idea watching this show, and we're not going to make any money off it. Probably. But yes. to, be, to be a victim and to be a successful victim, you have to be relatable. And I was watching that Anderson Cooper interview. Yes. She's the least relatable person to the point where I can't even believe she's human. Yeah. She said she felt during her public life like she was on a high wire without a net. 
She like the DNC rigged the primary in your favor. How is that not a net? Like yeah. when I think of the times of my life when I didn't have a net, I was like a Boston Market cashier and sleeping on people's couches. Like yeah. that's not a net. No. You have a throne that people were carrying you around on, and you still mess it up. And she also said, "I am a huge fan of Lay Miz. Who isn't?" <laughs> Literally all other people. <laughs> no other people are huge. We like beer and reality and TV and stuff like that. People have seen it. People think it's fine. But that's what she thinks people are sitting around talking about all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, she needs to just stop because yes. she's not relatable enough for the, any hey, of this I to want ever her to work. I keep going. You go. Just go. <laughs> yeah. Just keep going. I hope she runs again. You know, uh, we got to move on. But I love this quote. She was so talking. So does she. <laughs> <laughs> She went to Chipotle and she was talking about what happened at Chipotle and she says sometimes a burrito bowl is just a burrito bowl. And that's playing on the Sigmund Freud classic line on uh, phallic imagery. Something is, is sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. I don't think she realized what that meant and what kind of imagery that puts into your head. You don't want to put Clinton and cigars in the same sentence. But I don't think she made the connection, but for some reason I did. Still to come, Ben Shapiro goes to Berkeley, and Berkeley goes to hell. As you see Berkeley hunkered down, what exactly was coming to town? A massive earthquake, a Category 6 hurricane, a meteor strike killing everyone with a nose ring? <laughs> no, they were doomsday prepping for this guy. And if you want to get this magnificent tumbler, then all you have to do is spend $99 a year, just get the annual subscription, you can pay more than that for the monthly, get the annual, and then you will be guaranteed to get all of those things, plus this fantastic leftist here's hot or cold tumbler. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Berkeley was preparing for. Ben Shapiro, that little fella with the squeaky voice. <laughs> yep. When Cal Berkeley played host to his speech by the conservative radio host to deal with protesters, the school beefed up security to the tune of $600,000. The school also shut down buildings and barricaded the hall where Shapiro spoke. And leading up to the speech, told students and faculty to seek counseling. How pathetic. <laughs> pathetic. Now, these measures weren't about accommodating Shapiro or free speech. It was about accommodating people afraid of speech. Here's the crowd chanting outside Shapiro's speech about his speech being violent. Well, that's confusing. If speech is violent, shouldn't they shut up? I think it's safe to say that these are not bright people. All right, Cat. Uh, Thank you. You can applaud anytime you like, but uh, <laughs> it helps my self-esteem. Um, speech is violence, cat. Yeah, no, it isn't. <laughs> also, I don't think that these kids are really afraid of him or really were worried. I think a lot of them were just going along with it yeah. because it's, you know, they think it's cool and hip. And I found proof of that. Can we bring that up real quick? Ben Shapiro, not welcome here. <laughs> I know for a fact that if you don't hate someone enough to know how to correctly spell their name, to type it in, to hate stalk their Instagram, then you don't hate them at all. Yes. You don't. And a lot of people are debating whether or not he's too offensive, or Van Colder's too offensive, or Milo's too offensive to speak. But that's not even the argument. The argument is that they still have First Amendment rights no matter what. Exactly. Free speech. And I would be much more afraid to see those rights not being protected than I would of any speaker mm -hmm. ever. Tyrus, there are people all over the world that are suffering. They're refugees. They come here. They don't need counseling. They just try to find a job and work. These kids are embarrassing. Well, it just goes. But the woman who ran for the presidency of the United States is doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I'm not going to mention her name because I don't want to hear the booze, but she just, <laughs> it's just a state of victimhood. You yeah. Know, it's like, I don't want to hear what he has to say because it's going to hurt my special place. When I grew up, you kept your special place in your special place. You didn't, <laughs> Yeah. no one could hurt it. You know, it's just, it's become, it's, it's defeating that it costs money to be able to speak your mind. Yeah. And here's the thing. It's, if I don't like what he has to say, I'm not going to go. Yeah. And that's it. 
You know, it's funny. It's even if I idea. even if I liked what he had to say, I still wouldn't go because I'm lazy. I would never. <laughs> like, just I would just not yeah. get up and go. Jason, you know what? If I were their parents, if I were, if my, I would completely cut them off financially because if they are out there like protesting speech, I've raised a terrible child. <laughs> no, well, in the, in the government, look, we all pay for it. We all yeah. supplement this is this six hundred thousand dollars for security, and the irony. These are the people who preach the most tolerance. They're the least tolerant of yeah. anybody that, that you see. Yeah. Now, you know what? They expected, Joe, they expected a lot of violence, a lot of stuff, and it didn't happen. There were only nine arrests. And the reason why it was so benign was the police enforced the rule, no masks. So suddenly, yeah. none of these jackasses could commit crimes because they can't wear masks. Isn't that the solution? Yeah, I think it is. And that's the same kind of laws they used to pass to prevent the KKK from assembling. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're... they're yeah. is what they are. And they're only... They only flex when they're in mobs like that. Right. And the idea that they would say that... that their violence is considered speech, and your speech is considered violence. It's like they read 1984 and thought it was a handbook yeah. on how to conduct yourselves. Mm -hmm. And also that they appropriate the language of actual victims. They're saying, brace yourself yeah. for Ben Shapiro's. But we have people who are fleeing hurricanes right yeah. now, yes. and these people are saying, oh, show me on your swimsuit line where the bad idea touched you. They're <laughs> pathetic. Where'd you get those bruises from, bro? Harsh language? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really sad. The, uh, University of Utah, there's some students there, a uh, couple radical groups are planning to disrupt another Shapiro speech September 27th. They've asked the university president to cancel it. They're small groups, but these are fanatics. Mm -hmm. But I, I have to say, like, and I, and, uh, if, if they enforce this no mask rule from now on, it's uh, there's going to be no more violence. Also, all these yeah. idiots are making him incredibly popular. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, that's true. He said now Shapiro's a superstar. Yeah. Probably won't return my calls, but that's okay. <laughs> I love you, Ben. Coming up, could Kid Rock be our next great president? And who would be his VP? Uncle Cracker. Is the next Donald Trump hitting the stump? That's uh, what you might think if you happen to be at a Kid Rock concert this week. The rocker made his first Senate campaign speech standing in front of a podium flanked by two lasses, accompanied by pyrotechnics and music. Political campaigning may be entering a new era. Kid Rock began his speech with policy notes. What's going on in the world today? Seems the government wants to give everyone health insurance, but wants us all to pay. My goodness. <laughs> then he had the strongest words possible for neo-Nazis. Call me a racist because I'm not PC and think you have to remind me that black lives matter. Nazis, bigots, and now again the KKK? I said, you racist, stay the hell away. <laughs> He ended with suggesting he may be running for president one day. And if Kid Rock for Senate has got some folks in disarray, where do they hear Kid Rock for president of the USA? Because wouldn't it be a sight to see President Kid Rock in Washington, D.C., standing on the desk in the Oval Office like a G? All right. I'm sorry. How is it even possible to compete with that? <laughs> Good luck, Democrats. Although they've already already started looking for their candidates. We should run through the forest. We should dance in the streams. We should sing. We should laugh. We should love. We should dream. We should stare at the stars and not just at the screens. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what it means to sing? Martin O'Malley. And we'd all but forgotten you. <laughs> Jason, has Trump changed the way future politicians will I mean, that, that could work. I can't think of anybody that could beat that. You know, that surreal moment for me was during the Mitt Romney campaign. Kid Rock did a lot for Mitt Romney. And to see Mitt Romney talking to Kid Rock <laughs> about policy was like blowing my mind. And, yes. And he learned from it. And I think, I hope he runs in Michigan. He can win that race. Oh, he, he, no, he could he win. Will. 
If he <clears throat> wants to be a senator in Michigan, I'm from Michigan, he has to do one thing, and that is get his name on the ballot. That's it. <laughs> he will win. He will 100% win. I'm calling it right now that he'll win. Think yeah. about Michigan. Trump won Michigan, and also in the Democratic primary, Bernie won. Mm. They're all, they would 100% vote by Debbie Stabenow. Kid Rock is going to be a senator if he runs. Yeah, 100%. You know, I assess the voters uh, who he might not get. So with men, he'll get men, yeah. right? With women, he'll get women. <laughs> <laughs> what he won't get are beta male students and blog editors at the Huffington Post <laughs> and angry unemployed activists. So I calculated that he will get 98.5% <laughs> of the vote. <laughs> Pyrus? Tyrus, this guy is taking professional wrestling into politics. No, he did not. <laughs> Stop. He's a singer. He ain't no wrestler. And Donald Trump did that. Donald yeah. Trump actually wrestled at WrestleMania. That's and right. hosted. Donald Trump, he, that's how you cut a promo. We watched Donald Trump. What, <laughs> what he's trying to do, mm. here's the deal. Donald Trump is a unicorn. Yeah. Okay? And he's a pony. You can't, <laughs> you can't do what Donald did. Really? You don't the think difference, you want to bet? I will bet. Okay. $2. All right. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. When Donald made mistakes or when anything from his past was brought up, he owned it. Yeah. Yes. Fired back on you. It's already starting, and they hit him with a, well, didn't you used to perform a Confederate flag? I'm not talking to you. You're done, bro. <laughs> yeah. You're done. You have to own you were a wild rock and roll child, and you did the drug, you did the partying, or whatever. You got to own it, turn it around, and throw it back at him. Not, oh, no, no, I'm not talking to you guys. I'm whatever. That's not going to work. You can't be a Donald Trump yeah. because there's only one Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. He is just, that formula won't work for I, anybody else. It I won't don't know, work. Man. It'll be cool. They'll laugh about it, but if you can't back but up that stuff with some substance. I don't know. Great rap with, no, with guitar. Doesn't really work in the mainstream, but. <laughs> It, nothing he said, I was like, cool. He just said a bunch of sound bites that everyone's I, already heard before. I disagree, I, I, but I got to move on. I want to talk to Joe. But I, cause I've seen Schwarzenegger, what's his name, Jesse Ventura. A lot of unusual people get into politics. But they had messages, strong messages from Jump. Yeah, that was. A, a I think he had strong, I thought he. Had, I, you, you have to see. Watch his whole speech where he yeah. talks about single fathers. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. You know, I thought it was. Well, I, I like watching just the idea of him talking about being president with a hot babe on either side. And all I could yeah, picture was a single tear down the cheek of Bill Clinton. <laughs> thinking he was a generation off he a, that he could have done that. Uh, well, you know, I think what we've learned is that we're so used to politicians lying to us and not coming through with it. We're almost cool with the lying part, expecting it won't come through. So give us better lies. Yeah. Give us better nonsense up front. And maybe it'll happen. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe it'll work out. Yeah. We don't know. Senator Kid Rock, it's happening. Yeah. You know, and by the way, I don't think there are any liberal celebrities from Michigan to go up against him. There's nobody alive from the MC5. Remember that band? A yeah, left wing I band, Motor City 5. Oh, no. Uh, uh, Wayne Kramer. Well, uh, he's bring, a, he's yeah. a felon, though. He can't run. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Well, that didn't stop um, the entire Democratic Party. <laughs> All right, coming up. The nominees for the Toy Hall of Fame are here. Sadly, Baby's First Beehive was snubbed again. <laughs> <laughs> Matchbox cars, transformers, Pez dispensers. I've had trips to the ER involving all of them. <laughs> I fell on them. <laughs> They're also among 12 finalists vying for a place in the National Toy Hall of Fame. Other contenders for the class of 2017 include the paper airplane. That's for poor people. Sand. Who plays with sand? Play food? Never heard of it. And the board games, Risk and Clue, for the nerds. <laughs> then you got the Magic 8-Ball, which was for the creeps. You had My Little Pony, the card game Uno, and, the, of course, the Wiffle Ball. Hmm. All right, Congressman, which toy deserves immortality in the Hall of Fame? And keep it clean. Stretch Armstrong. Oh, yeah. Stretch Armstrong. <laughs> It's a classic, and how can how can Silly Putty not be Silly Putty compared to, to well, it might already be in, it might already be in the Hall of Fame. Silly Putty is the Beatles of toys, exactly. but no, you're right. I don't think it is. Stretch Armstrong though taught millions and millions of children how to torture. <laughs> I tried to make that thing bleed. Yeah, I did it's everything stressing. I could. I'm going to pull it more and more and more. It's a terrible lesson, uh, Joe. What is your pick? Uh, I would go with Stretch Monster, who was Stretch Armstrong's nemesis which was a green stretch monster like that. And what was cool is in the summer, they would get 
they would get kind of uh, loopy because they would get too soft from oh. the heat, and you'd have to put them in the in the refrigerator for a while. Oh, look at that! And they were also nice. If you swung them at a friend, the head was really hard, so it was like a club. You could you could really hurt them. Oh, uh, that's really interesting. Cat, did you have any toys growing up, or did they just lock you in a closet? I'm <laughs> I'm judging by your present behavior. Yeah, I like to like catch frogs and and play with uh, different things, but <laughs> sand. Is not a toy. No. <laughs> How is sand a toy? How? Anybody have any? Sand castles? So sand. Okay, kid, okay. Just because kids play with it doesn't mean it's a toy or else boogers would be like number one on the list. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a snack. My logic is irrefutable. <laughs> right. Well, it's not beach sand. What? It's, it's an actual, my, my daughter still plays with it. What is it? They build, they build little shapes and stuff. It sticks to the floor, but it, and you pick it up, put it in. It's actually very cool. It's no, they very were talking creative. about sand sand. That's what it's called. I read the article. Sand. I don't. What about you? What was your toy? You know what? This is tough for me because, uh, as an, I still play with toys um, as a parent and as a collector, I still mess around with stuff. But for me, um, it was Transformers or Wiffle Ball. But I still actually have a Wiffle Ball and bat in my truck. Well. Wow. So yeah, and uh, I used to play like there. I literally have one in my truck. I still play every chance I get. It's just you know a what's funny. Do you know what's hilarious about that? If you get into an altercation, yeah, I don't somebody, need other things. No, but you walk out with a wiffle ball bat, they're still terrified because it's you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, chances oh, are, they, don't they really need a, a weapon. Thank God it's not a real bat. I carry yeah. two guns at all times. I really don't. <laughs> you, know, you stay right there, I'm going to get a bat that's going to change it. I'm gonna, it's like, I'm oh, thank God it's a wiffle ball yeah. bat. Yeah, yeah, you don't know what I'm going to do with it. Yeah. You know, um, my toys, like I like the dirt clod. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The dirt clod you can never go wrong with the dirt mm -hmm. clod. It's free. You go out, you throw it at somebody. It ruins their clothes. I enjoy the dirt clod. I also, I'm the only person I know that collected wacky packages. Oh yeah, those wacky cool. packages were great. Those were stickers. They came in a little package, and they were a parody of products. Like they would like if Tide detergent would be Snide detergent, <laughs> and then they would come in with, and they always come with that really stiff piece of gum, yeah. you know, and you. It was brittle and it had no taste. You could slice somebody's face with it. Uh, we had we had uh, garbage pail kids. Oh, but that came later. See, yes, young, well, yeah, so did I. So, shrinky yeah. dinks. Shrinky dinks were. No, you don't have to call me names. <laughs> <laughs> shrinky dinks. What about see the what slinky? You, slinky, slinky was stupid. I never got it working. But the little stress. What's the sea? Sea, monkeys. sea monkeys? Sea monkeys. Sea monkeys. My brother's friend off. Adam knocked over my sea monkeys, <laughs> and I'm still upset about it. Yeah, sea it's monkeys in their head. It is kind of a toy. It, no. It's not a toy. Sea monkey? They showed them in the comic book. They were, yeah, they're they're they were playing beings. guitars and stuff. They were dead shrimp. What about... what? <laughs> they were alive until no, no, Adam no, 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 no. over. You're getting mixed up with the horse, uh, the seahorses. No, seahorses sea were brine were little... shrimp, right? Uh, no, so that was, was a sea monkey. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. it wasn't a monkey. Wow. In the book. <laughs> Everything you ever sent away from the back of a magazine was yeah. a lie. X-ray glasses. X-ray glasses yeah. never worked. Then you had I, to live with the shame of being the kid who actually ordered the yeah. X-ray glasses. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. And being caught in the Sears dressing room wearing them. Oh, <laughs> lost me there. Just staring at the curtain. <laughs> Not working. The Sears? Sears. Sears. They dress hey, I used to buy clothes at Sears. <laughs> Final thoughts next. <laughs> I still do. <laughs> I shall see you on Monday on The Five at 9 p.m. Eastern. We are running out of time, so... What you wanted to say all show, but haven't had the chance to say, so here's your chance to say it. Right now. Jason, or JC as I like to call you. <laughs> uh, hats off on a serious note to Mason Wells. In the Brussels bombing in 2016, this guy was hit by an improvised explosive device, a terrorist attack. He interned for me, and now he's entered the, entering the Naval Academy. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. All right, Joe, I'm sure you have something just as inspirational. Yeah, I feel like a real schmuck going on after that. <laughs> Uh, got big shows coming up on Long Island, end of the month. Uh, McGuire's Comedy Club on the 29th and 30th. Go to joedevito.com for my full schedule, videos, and clips, and all kinds of fun stuff. Excellent. He's quite a comedian. Uh, Tyrus, what do you got? I'd just like to say that Peg Bundy was ahead of her time. I think. Hope so. Uh, I think that she was a trendsetter, and just watching the show, she was dead. That she said it like she was. She didn't do what she did what she wanted to do, and <laughs> spandex and high heels works. Uh, yeah, it's uh, true. Yeah, it's, 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 All right, Peg Bundy. Last but not least, Cat. 
I am seriously considering adopting a tegu, which is a five foot lizard, uh -huh. welcome into my home so I can name him Pierogi Pierogi Timpf. And I'm very concerned that I don't have anyone in my life close enough to me to convince me not to. <laughs> That's pretty sad. <laughs> who owns this, uh, who owns the lizard? Uh, they're at Reptile Expos, and I may or may not go to those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks to Congressman Jason Chavitz, Joe DeVito, Pat Paris, studio audience. I'm Greg Gutfeld, but I love you, America. Water's World is on.